Welcome back everybody to the Game of Thrones mod. Now, I was very particular about starting this episode at the right time. Valyria have just gone into a another mega war and the Veil has broken free. Are they, are they fighting on behalf of... They are fighting on behalf of Valyria, which is good for us because it means their troops are going to be off the continent. Do we still have the claim? That's the real question because I have no idea. We don't. Oh, that's so bad. So yesterday, obviously, we spent all that time and effort trying to get a claim for... No, we do have a claim. Can we not push his claim for him? Um... Evidently not. I don't know why, because he's a landed vassal with a claim on the whole of the veil, but never mind. Doesn't really matter too much. Look, look, we can still push our other claims anyway. Oh, but the, all the council fucking hit us now, don't they? So we're going to have to buy favors again, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. I don't know why we can't push that claim. Was it. What, what sort of claim was it? Uh, oh, it's a weak claim, right? So we can only push it against a woman or a child. Um, so if you were to die. If you were to die, then suddenly we would be able to push it because his heir would be both. Okay, this could be interesting. Um, unfortunately, we can't really do much against it. We could, if we buy enough favors, if we convince the council, or if we turn 16, we could obviously go to war of our own accord here, of our own volition, rather than having to rely on the council. And we could push some of these many, many, many different duchy claims that we potentially have. We'd just give them the towers. When they die, we get the towers back. They keep the duchy. It would be a really good way to expand. Unfortunately, there's no way we can do that right now. Um... Damn it, I don't really think we've got the money that I really want to invest in this war either. Now, I will say before we dive into too far into today's episode, I have gone through and removed a lot of the provinces from the map manually just to see if it will help out. Now, I've, I've been cutting out of videos, but we are getting a lot of lag and a lot of crashes as well, um, mainly because the Game of Thrones one is massively dense. So there, there's a monthly check. I don't know what it is, but at the end of every month, it's occurring and it's slowing the game. Sometimes it would cause a straight up crash. Sometimes it just will... I, as you can see that would just make the game hang for a while. It's not autosave or anything like that, so I've only got it set to six month autosave. I'm not sure exactly what's causing it, but it is slowing the game down massively. Oh god, we're gonna die. Don't die. <laughs> Don't die, I beg of you, please. I can't afford- we can't wait another 16 years for this next kid to go. Oh, she's actually older than us, right. Oh, right, because she's, uh, she's second born in line. Um... He can marry for love, I don't mind. We lose 400 prestige or we disinherit this random man. I think that's a fair- I think that's a fair trade. Come on, you've gotta live. Otherwise, we're going to be going to wait for ages. Then we're going to be playing as a female ruler that everyone's going to hate. Um, actually, is she any good? She's not coming out too badly in terms of education. We're fine. It's okay. We've got another six years then before we can really make any sort of military action. To be honest, the Veil is going to go into independence. I say independence. It's going to go into this mega war system whereby we can attack it without Valyria helping out as much as possible. Gods of Sarnor Reformation. I'm going to be honest, wasn't expecting that one anytime soon. Um, I think maybe I should just bide my time. Maybe we should just wait till we turn 16. I don't think anything is really going to happen in the meantime. We're certainly not going to get attacked by anyone because there's no one powerful enough to stop us besides Valyria. And even then, I don't think they would. They've got much bigger fish to fry than us right now, such as rebellion after rebellion. What's going on? What what war is that over Valyria right now? Oh, come on, game. Don't do not do this to me. Come on, live. Okay, Um, it is a... Oh, fuck me. Please, stop, stop. Just tell me. No, or, or not, or don't. Oh, because that kid left the war. Okay, that's, that's very frustrating. Um, oh, no, they've left the war. Just tell me what the war of Valyria is, damn it. Um, Basilisk Guards, War of Basilisk Guard Independence attacking... Oh, so it's just one guy going for independence. That wasn't the same war from a second ago, but... Okay, so for the time being, then, let's just leave it. Let's just be patient. Wait until we get full control over war declaration again. Because only then are we really going to be able to do this. Otherwise, we're going to have to say hundreds and hundreds of God to bribe the whole council. My God, those two years were so, so long in real life. It's taken me hours just to chunk through these these years in game. What quality of education would you like to purchase for yourself, Kingman, your mud? I think we will spend to get him an exceptional education. How's he doing then? Um, oh God, we've got to get from martial character, haven't we? Martial uh, intrigue wouldn't be too bad. Stewardship would be neutral. Diplomacy would be bad and learning would be bad as well. Um, so we will go for... The martial education, seeing as I feel like my hands are sort of tied a little bit there. Uh, is there anything else we can do at all to, to buff ourselves up? Can we do any sort of event? Can we go on a tour? Can we? I hate that they've taken out the tour, that you can only do that if you're a ruler. You know, you used to be able to go and tour foreign lands and stuff, but our court's getting a bit chunky, huh? Maybe that's what's causing the game to lag so much. Maybe we've got just a load of... What are, what are the courts in the other... Maybe we've got too many just courtiers kicking around? No, it only seems like it's us, probably because we're the top level title of our realm, so people are probably trying to get into our court because we're prestigious and whatnot, whatever else. Um, did they get- Oh! The King of the Mountains of the Vale is attacking Valyria. Is that something we could push to our advantage here? Uh, no, because we've got our levies raised where I'm trying to fight off this random rebellion. Um, alright, never mind then. Okay, you know what, it doesn't matter. We can't do much better right now. I'll, I'll see how long it takes to deal with this random guy going into rebellion. Then we'll see if we can do any damage to Valyria after that. Uh, also the Mountain of the Veil. Vale. I don't know, maybe now we can push a claim because it's a contended title? I've no idea. Maybe the Game of Thrones up mod adds some weird mechanic that I'm not aware of. 
Hey, there we go. I've read about the great men in history and some now I want to be like them. We have gained ambitious. I haven't actually checked on the character in ages because I've genuinely just been waiting for him to grow. Hey, not bad. Shrewd, patient. Ambitious is great. Slothful is shit, understandably. Playful becomes greedy, deceitful, lunatic. All of those are going to be good. Fussy, patient, greedy, paranoid. All of those are going to be good. Brawny, honest, rude, arbitrary, dull. We st could still lose shrewd if this ends up becoming dull. Brawny, honest, arbitrary, Rude. Oh, God, all of those are bad besides Brawny, aren't they? Rowdy's so bad. Oh, we don't have an educator. Oh, God damn it. Okay, 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 okay. Bear, bear, bear with, bear with, bear with. Glad I checked in hindsight. Um, we're looking for a patient, diligent. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to recruit someone from out there in the world. Damn it, you almost caught you almost got me there, game. I, I sort of switched off a little bit, just waiting for all this time to take the hours and hours it'll take. Uh patient diligent shrewd. There are people we could invite here. Oh god, look at this guy. Justice of Arendelle. The Justice of Arendelle. Buy him a favor. He won't come because he's married to a fucking counselor. What if we invite her? Uh, in prisoner? That would do it. Um, <laughs> shit. Okay. Tolo. Tolo is fine. S send Tolo a gift. Buy Tolo a... Buy t won't... He's a counselor? Castellan. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Diligent Patient Shrewd is out. Right, so let's try Diligent Patient Genius. Yes. Go for the highest one. Um, Alaric Linster. Um, also a counselor, unfortunately. Rael. It's just a courtier. Her husband's landed character, though, so we can't buy a favor from her. Um, he is also a landed character. God damn it, uh, genius. Quick. Quick. Oh, there's one. There is a ooze character. Look at all the traits. Well, just, authoritative, patient, diligent. D uh, bring him on board. Oh, my God. Uh, send gift. Invite to court. That is some good shit right there. So, the education we're going to get from her is probably going to be quite high in that case. She's not exactly a good martial character, but she's a good educator to have around. Uh, so assign guardian. No, no, no. We need to go back to us. And then what's her name? Dayella. Assign guardian. Us to. I, I like how how Valeria has sort of played the played the secret game here. They've really gotten under our skin with our. Well, quite literally, given that we are Valerian ethnicity, but now being educated by a Valerian woman, it's getting a little. They're getting a little bit uh, insidious, aren't they? The opportunity to go out as as young babby 14 year old. Oh right, because we count as an adult now, don't we? We can get married. Uh, we need to find ourselves a a good wife in that case. Um, you know, we'll check out that in a second. Let's go out first, just in case we die on the way out there. I want to meet that master brewer again, because that guy looks like he could bring a lot of wealth and a lot of morale into our... I don't know how we did it in hindsight. We'll say, I'd rather look for a quiet place to rest, I think I said. And then... I'll go into the... Shit, sit on the bench for a while. That was it. Hey, there we go. Cool. After a while, a uh, tottering guy stumbles over your shoes. You have up in the office to buy some of his self-brewed ale. He drags you to the next tavern to have a few more drinks to compare them. Let me let me take my 14-year-old king out drinking. Thank you. This guy's master brother. This transfer gaining gregarious and socializer. Oh my god, we got gregarious as well as everything else. Plus five vassal opinion. That's fantastic. Plus, more importantly, we've got ourselves a master brewer now, so we can go famous brewery. Look at this. Now, we've got enough gold in the treasury to build two of these. You give 10% army morale and three gold. This is massive. Um, we've already got one in the capital. Let's build one here, then. Um, we'll just go along the towers, building one each. There we go. So we only need another 150 gold, and we can build the, the third brewery, too. It's going to bring so much wealth and so much morale into the realm. Excellent. Thank you, my friend Arlen the Just. Excellent news. We gain 325 gold. That'll do it. Thank you. Uh, sure, whatever. Man, I got command. I don't really care. Uh, brewery. And that's the last step, isn't it? After that after that point. Yeah, so, so two out of two on the brewery. Cool. Uh, that's fantastic news. So I think we should start building up some other stuff as well. What do we need for Castle Town Level 4? Modest Estates 3. Modest Estates 3 is just this one, so it's another 135 gold. I'm, I'm trying to buff up the tax just in our capital. Because that way, if we have all of these towers with a ridiculous amount of tax, if we have all of these towers with a ridiculous amount of troop count as well, if we have him collecting taxes, it's going to collect from all of those. So it's going to be a much, much bigger modifier rather than, you know, building up a lot of Ammon's Rest or when we had Seaguard and the Cape Eagles building up those as well. I just want to buff up this province as much as possible. We're going to put all our eggs in the Ammon's Rest basket. Problem with that is, of course, if people siege it, then, uh... We're losing a lot more. We're losing a lot more relatively if we're putting everything into this. We just inherited the 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 Cape of Seaguard again because the the woman in charge of it died of grayscale. I'm going to assume. Uh, yeah, funnily enough. So we've got a choice here. We give it to our family member, Lord Peter of Seaguard, a a, a fellow member of House Mud. He's not very good. We could give it to uh, Lord Dickon of Martlet Ness. We give it to this guy of Gravesham, or we give it to that guy who was the last descendant of House Stark. Um, Bearing in mind, his, his father was, or his grandfather, they go, Winter the Black Wolf of Hal Stark, his father, Don Al Snow, who was an unlegitimate. I, I think there is a way to actually legitimize him eventually. Either way, we're technically keeping the. Oh, they won't even let me give it away, you fools. I think we just gotta wait till 16. I think I just gotta blitz out these last two years, and then we'll be done with it. At long last, seven real life hours later. Okay, it wasn't quite that long. Regency for King Manor of the Rivers and the Hills in the Neck of the North have ended. We became a brilliant strategist. What else did we gain? Uh. 
Well, we did lose Shrewd. I think the traits in the Game of Thrones mod just disappear. You know, the extra childhood traits. Normally in the base game, they'll, they'll throw an event. It's like, oh, I've discovered that actually I am a stupid boy. And then you gain dull or something like that. Um, 20 Marshall. Nice work. That's, I think that's a bit of a worry, but never mind. I'm sure we'll manage. Uh, what do we want to do then? Well... I don't even know where to start with this guy. I don't want to play a bloody martial character for obvious reasons. But, um, I, I mean, let's, let's embrace it. Let's embrace it now we've been throwing it. So we need to find a marriage first and foremost with our guy to make sure that we've got a uh, non-female heir for too long. Mainly because all of us is going to be pissed off at that. So why don't we go for Prodigy? See if we can go for a very smart character. Join core. Yes, there is no one. Okay, let's get married. No. Diplo range. Yes. Gender. Women. Sort by age. See if we can find a prodigy plus something else. I mean, this character's pretty good. This character's willing to come to our court. Done. Holy shit, that's so good. Uh, invite to court. She is uncouth, which is an attraction opinion here. She's got prodigy, though. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. Fuck it. Let's just invite her over. Might be better to go for someone who's maybe genius or strong, but prodigy's just all-round bonus to the stats so we can make the character really what we want them to be. Join us. Welcome. Mi Minel Min Minelna. Minelna Poravos. More Valyrians. Oh, she's Pentoshi. That's, that's fine. Her father was... Freeholder. That sounds that sounds Valerian. Hang on a minute. No, we're fine. Uh, demand religious conversion first and foremost. She says no. Then we'll throw her straight into the. How dare you? Okay. Now marry her then. Fine. <laughs> now now we marry her. Now that we've got this relationship off to a good foot, which is by making them hate one another. We'll also send her a gift as well. There you go. Award honorary title of uh, you can be court tutor. I mean, she's actually not bad as a court tutor, so that that's not too terrible. Nice work. Okay, let's have an son if possible. Family focus just to start off with. Probably not a terrible idea. Um, Mountain of the Vale. They've actually got their independence. What the fuck? No way. King Reynold of the Mountain of the Vale won? You have just, you have just set yourself up for defeat, my friend. So we can pick apart the High Lordship of Eastweald and the High Lordship of Iron Oaks. That's a pretty good chunk. That's most of the eastern parts of the Vale there. The question is, do we have any claimants that we could go for? Now, he's the emperor of the uh, the Mountain of the Vale now. So, unfortunately, it's going to be very, very difficult to get anybody to press any claims. Obviously, they're not going to be able to maybe vassalize this guy. Or it's Horn Vale. We could potentially vassalize this guy. Then we've just got to wait for a weak claimant to appear, who is his next heir. If this guy were to die... Which isn't impossible. Oh my god, I forgot we could steal artifacts. Why don't we go and steal some artifacts to start off with here? Um, so we can steal anything that isn't equipped. So we've got the Ron's, uh, the Royce Bronze Arm, which is quite cool. Uh, we've got a spare Dragonbone Bow. I don't know what there is out there that we would want to steal right now, to be honest. Um, I'll have a look around and see what we can find. It's been ages since I think we've been on a heist with this uh, with this campaign. So let's uh, let's try and get this stuff with the sh Shield of the Little Lion. What is that? So Wilbur Osgrey, the Little Lion. Okay, cool. Valyrian Steel Armor. Oh my god, she's got two pairs, one of which she's not using. High Storm Singer, Share of the Truth Speaker, and we can actually try and steal it. This could be massive. Valyrian Steel Armor with our Valyrian Steel Weapon. That's going to make us unstoppable. Then we'll see who can beat us in bloody battlefield jewels are. Go for it. Who shall join us in our heist? We're pretty good at the martial aspect, so we need someone preferably with high intrigue, high diplomacy. This guy will do. Lord Walter, my spy master, join me. We fulfilled the ambition to get married. Of course we have. And let's just see if we can build anything else in the capital right now then. Next level of Castle Town. Boom. I'm up for it. This is the amount of gold we're going to bring in from this. Now, the reason I want to do this is so that we can hire mercenaries whenever we feel like. So that if we do go to war for the Mountain in the Vale, and if they do end up calling in every bloody handle on the face of the planet, we have the means to be able to retaliate, or the means to be able to at least hold them off while our main forces are able to negotiate that war goal. Um... So next level of Castle Town, we need Modest Estate, so we'll build that one next. And then we are officially out of Simoleons. Okay, convince some servants to let me in. 56%, oh, we got 84%, force our way inside. And what are we trying to force our way inside of? Valyria? Uh, it was actually Valyria. Like the kingdom of Valyria. Holy shit, wow. Um... Just going to fight our way through some Valyrian guards there. Family first. Oh, my mother, Daenerys, the pretty mystic woman, can always rely on me for aid. What a strange way to... A strange thing to call your mother. The pretty mystic woman. You weird man. Okay. Rush them before they raise the alarm. 78% chance of success. My god, this is high chance of success. Um, pay interest on behalf of my bannerman, of course. You make a good point. Let this guy become commander. He's, he's a high lord, so absolutely. Oh my god, we might actually succeed. 51% chance of success. It's a coin flip. Are we going to get Valyrian Steel Armor? Are we going to end up being imprisoned by the High Storm Singer of the Kingdom of Valyria? Go! Oh, we've done it! Nice! Holy shit, that's so, so good. Valyrian Steel Armor added to our treasury. Holy shit. That's a hell of a way to prevent... I mean, personal combat skill plus 20. Quality 5 goes very nice with our Valyrian Steel Mace, I think. All right. Now then, I feel like not putting this character into a Warrior's Guild would be... 
a waste of potential. We've got the armor. We've got the weapon. We've got the natural ability. He only became a trained fighter, which was a little disappointing to say that we had a level four formidable fighter overseeing his his growth. His growth? Is that the right way to phrase that? His upbringing, probably a better way to phrase it. But I think we can push the advantage here. We know how these guilds work now. We, we've experimented with it quite a lot with King Salt the Bold. I think let's, let's do it. Let's dive straight back in and carry on. I thought we were supposed to be Valyrian. I mean, we've got the eyes for it. Or kind of. We haven't really got anything else, though. Have we got, like, the seed is strong with any of these? Apparently not. Just got the same fucking bloodline ten times over. All right. Uh, let's do it, then. Should we join the Berserkers? Go for the super high prestige. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's go for the risky. If the game's going to make us play a martial character, I'm going to go for the risky playthrough with it. Why not? Gods or glory. And, of course, we can run in a ridiculous amount of cash with Bounty Hunter. In fact, they've actually given us a mission to go on Bounty Hunting. Um... Right, right, so we want to show the Berserker's decisions. And then we've got Bounce Board at the top there. Huntmaster Oscar. Um, oh, oh, how strong is he? Zero. Skip the dual engine. Dead as dicks. Good work. Okay, what about this guy then? Oh, was that it? That actually fulfilled the mission. But that clearly wasn't the guy that we were told to hunt down. But never mind. Uh, no interesting targets right now. Let's start getting into shape. We have gained perfect shape. Health plus 0 0.5. Sex appeal, personal combat. Fertility plus 10%. It's obviously really, really good when we want to start building our dynasty back up. Request some training. We could also commission a sepulchre. Actually, what's the realm like right now? What are, what are we looking at? Got some people in our prison. Um, ooh, bit hit and miss, really. Half the vassals like us, half the vassals hate us, but there are a lot of dukes that actually dislike us quite a lot. If we release them, it increases their opinion. I don't know why you're in prison, so I'm just going to let them out. Um, must be something our regency did. I don't know if the regency can imprison people for you, but hey. Um... This guy's also in prison bias. Why couldn't I release him? Have I got a filter set on our prisoners? N no. <laughs> okay, God knows where that guy was then. How are we doing with auto stop plots? That's still enabled, right? Just wanted to double check because we're already putting our life on the line joining one of these bloody guilds again. So Lord of the Crag hates us for reasons. Uh, defeat me to declare war subjugated. That's reasonable. Although that was the guy we actually did subjugate with our last character. Or well, technically this character, wasn't he? Finished off the war. Lord of Wayfarer's rest hates us because he wants control of Acorn Hall. I can do that, my man. Here you go. Uh, Acorn Hall is all yours. It should be his anyway. It's part of his du jour duchy there. So that's just a very cheap way to get some opinion. Dislikes us because of all the various bloodlines that are bugged out, which I might remove because it's a little bit unfair on us. But hey, I mean, that was sort of the point of the campaign. Can we demand religious conversion? We can. How dare you convert over to the law, you shit? We could risk a massive rebellion trying to stamp out all of these vassals simultaneously. Maybe we should do that. So sort of all of our landed vassals who aren't our culture. So search around ruler, yes. Uh, not my religion. Go through them all and demand conversion. Oh, there's a lot, though. Wow, we'd piss off a lot of our realm. Granted, a lot of these count rank characters we wouldn't be able to convert. A lot of these top level characters we almost certainly can, though. To my religious conversion, no. Has the trait zealous. Oh, fuck you. Um, okay, right. Let, let's go through this then. And one by one, anybody we can. To my religious conversion, can we send him a gift? He will say no because he's apparently zealous. He is. Uh, Harion. I guess we've just got to. We just got to try it. It's always acceptance score ten. So. I mean, it seems to be just 50-50 regardless of their opinion. Because as we found out before, when we mass converted everyone, people we definitely weren't expecting did convert. So I'm going to I'm gonna go through... Oh, is he zealous as well? Or did I just misclick? No, he is definitely zealous as well. I'm going to go through this entire list then, see who we can convert. And then, fingers crossed, it will bring a bit more stability to them. At least help out with our moral authority. Speaking of which, that is our current goal then. Fuck the veil for a while. Let's convert this religion over. All right, here we go. Let's see if we got any luck with this. He converted. She did not. He converted. He converted. Oh, this is looking good. This is looking very good. So two people have said no. Three people have said no. Four people out of that religion can be reformed. Oh, because we've already got Storm's End. Holy shit. I didn't even think about this, but this is some big dick energy right here. 100% of our authority. We have Winterwood, God's Fall, and of course Storm's End. What do we go for then? Warmongering, unyielding might be pretty good. Rulers are extremely aggressive. Rulers at peace lose prestige. That puts a lot of pressure on us because we don't want to be constantly at war because of the amount of Andals that we're going to get dogpiled. Um, do not receive opinion penalties for raids, vassal levies. So that could be pretty big. I'm a strong man defending the home ter territory where our resistance proselytizing could be very good. Um, dogmatic could be quite good as well. Rulers waging war against members of their own faith lose piety. So that would encourage our people to... Uh, Man, we could also go for Cutthroat. We can't do that because we're in the Westerosi gods. That one you cannot have. Oh, Syncretism, but we're not going to have that one anyway. Um, I don't know. Unyielding? Warmongering, maybe? I'd love to put it up to a vote, but I don't think we're, we're that far into the episode to be able to do that yet. Um, Wow, I wasn't expecting this. So we could Warmongering. Is, uh, I think, I'm thinking if Warmongering, Unyielding would make the most sense, wouldn't it? Um, it's a strong one defending their home territories. We're getting invaded constantly. Religion is, religion is resistant to proselytizing. 
would be very good. Or we go for the opposite. We go for proselytizing and try and convert everybody. But we've already got... We're apparently doing that pretty well anyway because people are afraid of us. Um, I think unyielding suits the campaign perfectly. Because we are unyielding against the animal aggression. That works out pretty well. What do you want to go for then? Meritocracy is always very good. Stability is also pretty good. Um... Ritual sacrifice seems a little bit nuts. Seabound, probably not too bad either. What lets us raid? I'd love to be able to raid, but I, I think we have to be, um... We have to be warmongering, don't we, to do something like that? Man, I'd love to be able to raid. Launching raids against the Andals would be fantastic. Uh, Matriarchy, Ritual Sacrifice, Seabound, Animistic. Ancestor, Veneration, Elective, Worship of the Seven. Definitely not. Slaver? Oh, wow, that'd be pretty nuts. Bear in mind that the Andals are anti-slavery. Can enslave the Andals. Oh, God. Okay, that could be a hell of a twist. Adoption. I don't know. Daring. Uh, maybe become notorious raiders by looting. That's what we want. Uh, we have to be... None of these can be true. One of, we have to have. We have to either have Seabound or Ruin Up. So if we want to become daring, we also have to take Seabound. Okay, so do we want to go for the full-blown... So if we pick that one, then we can do it, right? Um, yeah. So do we want to go for the aggressive... Unyielding, so so constant unyielding against the Andal threat and also launching counterattacks against the Andals, but we miss out on any Cassus Bellow, we miss out on any specific features, like for example, uh I mean can we also pick could we pick God King worship? Establish ourselves at the head of the old god's religion. House Mud, the sole resurrectors and defenders of the faith, which absolutely we fucking are. Even the North fell to the uh, faith of the seven. Oh man. Radicalized followers of the religion and supporters and opponents of it as well. That could be interesting. God King of the the old. It doesn't make much sense though, does it? I think, I think a temporal would make more sense, and it still gives us all the same powers. We're just not worshipped as a god. That doesn't work for the old gods. For us to be worshipped as a god, I prefer temporal. I think we absolutely should make ourselves the head of the religion, given the amount of effort we've fucking gone to here. I don't know about daring Seabound though. It just basically lets us raid. Um... Divine marriage, polygamy, I mean, that's all obviously the, the meme choice, but probably wouldn't help out too much. I mean, stability and meritocracy seems like it would be the safest bet. Gods don't care about which order the child is born in, they care about the skills and virtues he shows as a man, that could be good. Stability would help out a lot with realm management. I don't know. Uh, although all it does is disable short reign penalty, that's not very good. Rulers can spend parties to improve their courtiers, attributes, I don't give a shit about my courtiers. Realm promises revolt risk is reduced, that's not a problem anyway, it's our vassals revolting. So I guess stability is not so good. Um... What else would I be tempted to pick, though, if not this? Slaver would be interesting. To be honest, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go and throw and break them down so very briefly. I apologize if I'm lingering too much on this, but it is the whole point of the series. So Divine Marriage, it's Mimi. Wouldn't really help out too much. Doesn't exactly stop the risk of being inbred or anything like that. Um, also would limit our, our dynasty massively. That's how the Targaryens died out, because of all the inbreeding. There were so few members of the dynasty left, because they were all intermarried into themselves. So I'd rather not risk that one. Polygamy is allowed. There's, as, as obviously merits to that, you know, potentially get a load more kids, sort of the opposite of that, we get a, a load of sh fucking kids because we could just marry out to a bunch of people. Meritocracy is good. There's, there's no argument for meritocracy would just be a sensible choice to go for. Um, monasticism is pointless, I think. Follows it the Australian game, plus two baseline, and great, okay. Stability, not bad, but when you actually break it down, I mean, short-right penalty is, is irrelevant anyway. Rulers can spend parties to improve it, uh, that's irrelevant. Round promises, revolt risk is reduced. Well, if I go to revolt risk right now, uh, and just quickly take a look, I mean, besides, what have we got here? This one here, because it's got Andal Settlers and Incompetent Rule and Triple Taxation, that's his fault, this guy's fucking fault here. Besides that, though, the round's looking pretty good. I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm probably not going to go for that one either. Syncretic faith doesn't make sense for the religion. What, we're going we're gonna to become syncretic with Valyria or R'hllor? That doesn't make sense for the old gods. Blood magic. There is a, there is a good argument for that. So there's, a, there's an actual fan theory uh, called Jojen Paste where the, 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 the three-eyed raven to turn Bran into a... Or, or to start is obviously training as the, the, the green seer. Fed him Jojen. Like literally fed him the blood of Jojen to do that. So blood magic might have some sense, but there's besides that, I can't think of any reason why the old gods would have blood magic. Patriarchy, nah. Equality, nah. Matriarchy, nah. I don't like any of these more limiting. We could just change that with our succession laws anyway. Ritualistic sacrifice seems to be a little bit tonally dissonant. Animistic does make some sense, because it's it's a much more traditional sort of um it's viewed as obviously the savage religion, but that could make some sense. Same with ancestor veneration. I don't like the worship of the seven. Uh, maybe Daring Seabound isn't a bad idea. Daring Seabound and Yielding and Temporal. Fleets can navigate through major rivers. I mean, we are the kingdom of the rivers last time I checked. Ship, ship maintenance reduced 10%. We do need to launch counterattack against Andalos as the final 
as one of the final objectives for this campaign. Completely controlled to Jor and Alos. I think I might go for what we've got right now. Unyielding, daring, seabound, temporal. Daring lets us raid. We can we can rip apart the Andals, not through war, but through just constant siege. Weaken them up massively. May declare coastal invasions. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Coastal invasions is like... Okay, I'm in. Okay, certainly seeing that Cassus Belli on the board. I'm up for it. The ancient old god's religion has attained great power. Rather than abandoning the old race, High Priest Manyor Mud, the most powerful priest, decides to reform the old god's faith in order to defend its followers from infidel invaders. Firmly under the leadership of the Holy High Priest, the old god's faith has abandoned its traditions as a folk religion for a well-defined dogma and structure fit to oppose its rivals. This event can mark the beginning of a new era of religious reformation all throughout the known world and spell doom for the traditional religious powers for the old gods. I feel like we haven't upset the religion there. We haven't adjusted the dogma. We haven't uh, alienated the, the true worshippers of the old gods. You know, we haven't introduced blood sacrifice or some weird other shit. All it is, is defending our realm and taking back what is ours. And I think that this has been thematically the right choice for the religion. 48% moral authority. The question is who didn't convert? I imagine we've got a load of people now that's sticking part of the old gods. Um... Old, old gods. That's hilarious. Old, old gods. I love it. So, now can we do my religious conversion again is the real question. I'll go through this list once again. I should have done this after we reformed. Obviously, that was quite dumb in hindsight. Oh, no, we need to do that to obviously get the piety to be able to do the reformation in the first place. So, no, nothing really lost there. I only go through. Make them convert to the... From the old, old gods. We have a lot of proselytizing to do them. My god. How much actually flipped? Faith of the Seven. Is it all still Faith of the Seven? My god, I actually didn't realize how much of it remained Faith of the Seven. And then we've got the old, old gods and then old gods as well. Beyond the wall, old gods. We need to do a lot of unification very, very quickly. But hey, now we can actually proselytize a bit more successfully. We need to gain a bit more moral authority. <laughs> Maybe even try and grab our holy sites as well. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Wow. What Cassus Belli do we have then? Becomes my next question. Invasions. Full-blown invasions. We play the Iron Price. Ah, uh, not quite. Oh my god. So that is just an invasion, Cassus Belli? We have to... What do we need? We just need prestige. We actually do just need prestige. Now, as it says invasion, it's invasion of a Dutch level title, but as with invasions, you can just siege more than what you should have, and then you've got it. My god, this is this is really opened things up. We should have had these gases bellow from the start of the campaign, in my opinion. So this is just giving us what should rightfully be ours. This is so, so cool. Wow. And let's commission a Grand Sepulchre in, in a celebration. Let it speak of us. Make something up. Absolutely. Don't bother saying that we reformed the religion and, and, and after generations of holding Stalwart against the Andals that we were finally able to unify our faith under a high priest. What is us? Don't bother saying that. Just fucking make it up. This is so good. So another cool thing as well, and this has sort of uh, accidentally been a really cool duality to our current character. This guy's going to gain a lot more prestige because he's part of the Berserker Society. We can get prestige from jewels. We can get prestige from the missions they give us, whatever else. That prestige we can then spend on just going straight into invasions because each one costs 750 prestige, right? So this is... Is it when we declare war? Oh, when we declare war, we only lose 250 prestige. So to declare the war, we'll obviously have to make up the extra 250 prestige if we want to chain a bunch of them together. This is massive. This is actually really, really cool. Now, we could also launch some external invasions as well because we have the ship... The, the, the ships available to us. So we could declare war, say, go for a random invasion of Pentos. Nice. I'm, I'm, I think we've just really, really sped things up. I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure in my mind that that was the right choice to go for those doctrines. We could have gone for some weird stuff. You know, we could have gone for meritocracy and blood sacrifice, whatever, but look at what we would have missed out on. Oh, defensive religion gets 20% to our left reinforcement rate as well. That sounds insanely good. Man, there are so many other bonuses I never really considered here. So what else we got here? Red Spolka, uh, exceptional military ruler, gives us about 60% bonus to our level enforcement rate. Perfect shape, defeat and elevation. Do we get any other bonuses here because of that? Master Builder. We still got that Master Builder. My god, he's been around for years. Silk Shipment. I didn't do that. I guess that must have been our trade master doing it while we were in our our regency. The question is then, ooh, brave, I'll take that. Or not. Can we can we actually raid? Because that was a big part of what it abs we absolutely can. Oh, this is massive. So what we do then is we launch a series of raids over a long period of time, weakening up the Eerie, maybe even trying to break down the garrison. Then after that, we declare an invasion, swoop everything up because they're already going to be weak from our constant years of raiding. We can really, really turn the tables on these guys now. I mean, whoa, look at this one. If we have formidable fighter or duelist, we can build a duel academy. It gives 30% levy reinforcement rate. Is there multiple layers to that? It was just one. That's still a lot. That's still an insane amount. Um... I think we have to go for that. I mean, what do we need? We need formidable fighter or duelist. Well, in theory, as long as we stay part of this society long enough. But I need to... I wish there was a note system, like on the outliner. That's what we need for CK3, right? So that I can remind myself of that, because I was almost certainly forget. But when we become a formidable fighter, build one of those. That's another 30% of reinforcement rate. We'll be able to spend our troops raiding as much as we like, doing really, really daring raids, killing off all of our armies, and then they'll reinforce in no time at all.
Um, well, I wasn't expecting anything to happen there, but we just went on a nice day out and we met a weird alchemist, which apparently gave us Mystic without even saying that it would give us Mystic. It said that we'd get a chance to be like paranoid or fire obsessed. Okay. We don't want Mystic. Oh, it's a lifestyle trait that we want Duelist or something. That sucks. Okay. Um, it, it's completely irrelevant, but I just thought I'd point it out because it's kind of weird. I suppose it means we could join the... If we ever got injured, like permanently injured from the Berserkers and had to leave, we could go and join the Alchemist Guild or something like that instead, though. Very weird. Does that does that do anything else? It's just the uh, learning and stewardship. Yeah, a bit pointless. But never mind. That's, that's kind of cool. And on the bounty board. Can we, can we go out and... No one. Come on. Someone's got to put a bounty up there so we can start getting our formidable fighter experience while I remember that building. Go on then, let's risk it. Ask for a jewel. Who's this guy? 95. Actually, we should have him. Skip the jewel engine. Ah, oh, failure. Well, look, it's more jewel experience, so it's going to keep adding up more and more and more. We lost in the melee as well, hence why we've got a black other. Should probably wait for him to, uh, to heal up first, huh? Um, this, this guy's been... Oh, we actually got Erudite. Wow. Um, this guy's been educating us for what feels like a lifetime now. I don't think it's really going anywhere besides just giving us... Oh, we got trusting? How do we... Was that from our, our training under this guy? One an idiot. Give us Deceitful. Oh, we've already got a Deceitful, so never mind. Well, because we've got Deceitful now, I believe it means we can poison our weapons if we ever get into any jewels. So, I, I think it doesn't work on the battlefield. You know, it's not like, a, oh, hang on, wait there a minute, wait there a minute so I can wipe down my mace with some poison. I don't think it will work. But uh, in, in actual tournaments and things, I think we can do it. We might be able to do it in our... Uh, we might be able to do it in our society jewels as well. Hey, there we go. 50% chance of Brave or 50% chance of... Becoming close to finishing, improving our fighting skills. We actually got brave. I'm actually really glad we got that because that's a lot better. Plus 10 personal combat. Well, we'll finish our fighting skills regardless. That's always going to happen. We don't always have the chance of getting... Oh, a bunch of people. 33. Skip the jewel engine. You are dead as dicks. Nice work. Jewel experience increases. Let's just clear out this bounty board and then we'll uh, we'll probably call it there for today. Nice, good fighter. Holy shit, that was fast. Bounty board. Red Priest Garth only has 25 personal combat. Done. I can tell we're going to die doing this, aren't we? It's so risky. Look at that. We've got Formidable Fighter. Once all of this stuff is filled up, I think we're going to have a lot of personal combat going for us right there. This guy, 17 years of age, already becoming a Formidable Fighter. Incredibly good character, incredibly good stats. More importantly, head of the religion. Well done, team. I think this has been a very successful episode. You know what? We are achieving our campaign goals quite massively. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Thank you all for your likes and your comments, as per usual. I very rarely thank the viewer. I do forget to do that a lot, but thank you all for your uh, your support, and I hope you guys are still enjoying this series. I think we're going to start to pick up here. Now we can start taking back Westeros and take back what is ours. Thank you to the insane top tier level patrons who make the channel possible in the first place. Those people are Alchemia, Anthony Golly, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hoffland, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Fukuna Vasquez, Kogolus, Harik, Harry McGowan, Iguana Squad, James Shea, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, Muskratful, Nordstrust, Necrofilm, Powers Presley, Rodin, Scott, Skaz, Smag Mustaine, Somnus, Shea, T Bag Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McClam, Vacuous Backers, Faragon, William Green, and Zazzy 7011. Thank you guys all for your support at the insane tier levels on Patreon. And thank you to our other patrons as well for their continued support of the channel. Thank you to Uwu Daddy, Asro, Adam Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Attila, Austin Taylor, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Blood for the Blood God, Buen Gun, Chris, Corgi Circus, David Van Diepen, Don, Duncan 207, Emerald Beam, Foosh, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, Genji Circus, Gothamo, Grey, Haji Dumar, I Am Sagatair, I See the Great, Jackson P, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, Jose, Jeebus Crust, you're on DeVries. Jill's lucky sister, Jilly Vondel. Joseph Beer. Justin Plot. Justin Rules. Justin Walters. Llewellyn Thomas. Luke Wallace. Manuel Bosich. Mastolp. Monty, Mosey Sampson, my name isn't Dio, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Peyton Denisar, Rush Down the Guard Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sam Kier, Shard Duel, Smurtworm, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089, Sweet Tea, Talar, The One Ring, Voodoo Mumbo, Void Prince Kibo, Will Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yellow Ford, Yorker, Zack, and Zico 2. Thank you guys all for your support. See you tomorrow for some true old gods aggression.